Not cool, man. Not cool. Actually, it is pretty cool. Because it's all fake. This is Mocha Pro. How's it going, everyone? David from DoD Media. Bit of time's passed since I made that. The old hair's gotten a bit longer. But never mind, I'm gonna show you how I made that shot now using the new Power Mesh tool in the brand new Mocha Pro 2021. Now, I wanna start off by saying this video is sponsored by Boris FX who make Mocha Pro. They're not paying me anything, but they are providing me with a free license for the software, which would otherwise cost me about 700 bucks for a one-off license or 300 bucks per year for an annual subscription. So in that regard, I do consider this to be sponsored, even though I'm not being paid to say any of it. And if this video makes you wanna get your own license to Mocha Pro, well, there's a 15% discount courtesy of Boris Effects in the description. Go check it out, not too shabby. Okay, so let's jump into After Effects. I've got my clip loaded up here, which is the clip that I used in that initial sequence. Now I've selected an in point for the clip, which is as neutral a face as I was pulling um, and as dead on as I was to the camera because I then turn my head and articulate my neck and stuff. Um, this was the most neutral face that I had to camera, which is what you want to start with when you're applying like a clean slate that you want to apply any tracked effects or mats or masks to. So that is the very first frame of my clip, which is going to make things a bit easier later on. And then I've just cut it at about seven seconds because I figure that gives enough time to show the result without having to spend unnecessary time tracking the entire clip. All right, so I'm just going to click on my effects controls, hit control spacebar, which is going to bring up my effects controls by Video Copilot. If you don't have that, get it now. It's a free plugin by Video Copilot that will save you a ton of time instead of having to go up to your effects and presets and then scrolling through to try and find what you want. I just come here and put in Mocha Pro. Bang. And then I'm just going to launch Mocha. Now, if you are used to Mocha AECC, it's exactly the same process for getting it loaded up and it... Oh, an update. Lovely. I'll update later. Okay, so if you're used to opening up Mocha AECC, this is the view that you probably get greeted with, right? It's the essential view. But if I change this to classic, well, a whole new range of options become available to you in the pro version. But to get started, we're going to do exactly what we would normally do, which is to draw an X spline. Now, in that first video, I actually drew beyond the size of my face, which I think slowed down the tracking considerably because it was tracking parts beyond there that were just, it couldn't figure out how they fit into the parallax. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw just within my face where I know that I'm going to need to put my bruise without having to add all of that extra distorted information uh, for the, that goes beyond it. So let's just, let's just go for that. Now, if you're in the track tab, you can see here that there are your usual five tracking options. You get your tran translation, scale, rotation, shear, perspective. And there's a sixth option available to you called mesh, which models a dynamic warping effect between images. So I'm going to hit that mesh and it's going to create this kind of spider web on my face where it is looking for high contrast objects or items or zones in my face that it can use to track a change of perspective, a, a parallax, if you will. Now, Boris Effects have a fantastic video on their YouTube channel where they explain the settings that you should be using for all of the different things that you might be tracking using the power mesh. So whether it's skin, whether it's a flag, whether it's a texture on a newspaper, whatever it is that is distorting, there are different settings that you can use to get the optimum tracking for that thing that you're tracking. Now for skin, it's better to use a uniform mesh instead of an automatic one. Now bear in mind, whenever you're doing anything with the mesh parameters here, you always have to regenerate your mesh to see the changes that have been made. And now you can see that the mesh has turned into a uniform, almost like a 2D plate in front of my face, like those pin things that you push 
your face into and it makes the shape of them. And this is why I said it's very helpful to have a frame where you're looking straight at the camera because it helps Mocha figure out what is flat and therefore how it should distort using that parallax where my nose would move further in a, in a horizontal distance than my ear would because it's closer to the camera. So then the mesh size set to 32. Again, that's what they recommend for HD and 4K. If I make that size bigger, it will make the gaps between all of those dots bigger. If I make it smaller, it'll make the gaps smaller. Now, obviously, if there's a bigger gap, it means there's a larger, you know, threshold for error. And inversely, if that mesh size is tiny, well, then your processor is going to melt when it's trying to track all of that so, so in detail. So I'm just going to follow their advice and stick with 32. But if you're shooting in 6K or 8K, then you would certainly want to bump that mesh size up a little bit. Now, vertices on spline. This just means that it really pushes all of the little vertices that you have, these little tracking dots, um, all the way onto the X spline that I've drawn instead of just fitting them in a kind of square pattern within that. I want them to actually place themselves all the way onto the spline. So I'm just going to add those on. Adaptive contrast is great if you uh, have a scene that is not well lit and you need to try and boost the contrast in in your subject, whatever it is you're tracking. But because I lit this fairly well, it's got a lot of information to work on. So I'm not going to use adaptive contrast. I'm going to let it do its own thing without having to create a, you know, a high contrast proxy for it to track from. And then smoothness set to 50 because it's 50%. It's not too harsh, not too smooth. It's just right. And when you've put all those settings in, you're ready to track. Now in the first video that I did, well, this is tracking, I'm going to give you a bit of a bit of a backstory. In the first video that I did in that beginning part, I tracked beyond the size of my head, right? And I think that severely slowed down the tracking. It was taking about, about three or four seconds per frame. Whereas here, it looks like it's going about, depending on the frame, it's going about one to two seconds per frame. So it's it's almost twice as fast, if not twice as fast, as having it extend just beyond the edges of my head. And I didn't need it to extend beyond the edges of my head because everything that I was doing was focused on my eye and my nose and a bit on my lip. So if you know where you're going to be tracking, just focus on that area. Don't include all of the crap that you don't need to. Alternatively, because Mocha is a planar tracker, which means that it will focus on different levels of planes that you are tracking, what you can do is create some exclusion layers. So you can create another layer with the X-spline and place it, I don't know, over my ear or over this ear and track those without using a mesh and then place them above this face track. And Mocha will actually exclude those. So it uses them as a sort of a mask to ignore. And that's one of the ways that planar trackers are so much more powerful than a conventional point tracker is that you can really you can really control what they see, what they don't see, what they focus on, what they don't focus on. Yeah, I mean, this is just whizzing through it compared to the first time I did this. Okay, let's go ahead and stop it there. Now, if I scrub through this, I mean, that is just, that in itself just looks so cool. I wish I could use that as like an effect. It looks insane. And as you can see, it's it's done an incredible job of tracking the surface of my face, the depth of my face, like a displacement map. Okay, so once the tracking is done, we need to prepare that tracking data to send back to After Effects. So we go back to our frame, our first frame, our reference frame, we go to Stabilize, and we check Mesh Warp. And you can see it's like completely distorted my face and, you know, warped it. Um, so what we need to do is actually expand the planar surface to the full frame instead of just that focused area so that Mocha knows that the full frame is actually the correct warping that we want, but it needs to track that information in my face instead of just tracking and warping my face. You'll see, you just come up here and this button here, expand the planar surfaces. There we go. Now it looks normal again because it's warping it to the whole frame, not just what's within there. Okay, and then we're gonna set our render quality to high. And now we just save it, Control S, Command S, or come up to File and save. And then we're good to close Mocha. We don't need to do anything else in here. Okay, so the next step now that we're back in After Effects is to export that frame as a slate that we can bring into Photoshop 
and apply whatever it is, whether it's tattoos, whether it's makeup, whether it's bruising, whether it's cuts, bleeding, whatever, to apply that in Photoshop and bring it back as a transparent Photoshop layer. So I'm gonna select my composition, hit Control and Spacebar yet again, and I'm just gonna copy this to my clipboard. I love that tool, seriously. Then I'm gonna open up Photoshop, and you can see right there my clipboard already has the right size for my thing, for my um, slate, and I'm just gonna paste that in. All right, now ideally I would have color graded this before, but I didn't, so I'm just gonna add a quick uh, little S curve adjustment to this. Okay, that'll do. Next up, I'm going to create a new layer with Command, Control, Shift. I'm gonna select my brush. I'm going to bring the flow down to maybe, I don't know, 10%. I'm gonna make sure my hardness is set to nothing. Bring my brush size up a bit. And let's maybe zoom in a little bit on that face. Look at that face. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add some black underneath my eye. So I'm just gonna come along here and change this to multiply. And I'm just gonna drop the opacity a bit so that it's not completely black because I'm using completely black on this layer. All right, so then I can get back to drawing on my bruise. Let's go ahead and make another layer. This one we're gonna add some color in. So I'll select that kind of teal that I had for my bruise. All right, for argument's sake, that's as good as the first time I did it. So now what we're gonna do is just shy out those two elements so that we have just this transparent screen. I'm gonna save this as a Photoshop file, which I'm gonna import as footage, so with merged layers. And if I drag that onto my composition, copy my Mocha Pro effect from my tracked layer, apply it to my bruise layer. Let's just change that blending mode to multiply because it looks crazy. And let's just go ahead and add a very quick LUT to this footage. Okay, using my summer HLG LUT in the description if you wanna buy it. Then all we have to do is go into our module renderers, hit render, bring that down to warp stabilize, open up our mat, apply the mat, people chatting out there. It's got a voice that carries. It's probably a singer. Speaks from the diaphragm. Good, it's a good voice to have. All right, now that would be everything that the Boris Effects YouTube tutorial says you need to do. However, if I just click along, you see that doesn't move. And I don't know if it's a glitch, if it's because I need to update that version of Mocha Pro or not. Um, but I've actually found that it needs to be aligned to the timecode of the clip. You can't just say this layer needs to be starting at the same time as the clip. It needs to be aligned to the source of the clip using the timecode of the clip, I'm assuming. Which means that if we just go to the end of this clip, minus one frame, and then hit our end bracket to move this layer to the very end, then the time code of that layer should align with the time code of our entire source clip. And now my bruise is tracking. So let's drop the opacity of this down a little bit because it looks a little bit too harsh, really. I'm showing you how to track it, not how to make a good looking bruise. That's where a makeup artist comes in. But if I go ahead and RAM preview this, okay, let's just hit end so I can loop it. I mean, Is that cool or is that cool? That just blows my mind. It's insane. That's insane. Is it gonna replace a makeup artist? No. Is it gonna allow you to do some catch-up shots if you need to reshoot without having to bring your entire makeup, makeup artist crew in? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think potentially, yeah. Nuts. I think the limits of what this can do are pretty much set by your imagination, to be honest, and how you shoot it as well. You need to you need to think ahead. Always plan for post-production when you're shooting if you know that you're going to be doing post-production on it. 
my two cents for you. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it was a little bit all over the place, but if you watched it and you think, you know what, I might give Mocha Pro a go, there's a discount code in the description, as I said, which is for 15% across all Boris Effects plugins, which is pretty great. All right, thumbs up, subscribe, bell, cheers. Now you can see here, now if, now if you, now if you're in the, tra now if you're in the track, now if you're in the track tab, you can see here that there are your usual five tracking options.